everybody. So I'm Les Winter, I'm the CEO of Bravo Company. The reason I'm teaching you this class is because we're going to literally be learning about Spanish American War technology. And this is how old this stuff is, but it has the advantage of it works. This stuff works when a lot of other stuff does not work. This stuff works. And what is this stuff we're talking about? Field phones. They're cold, they're bulky, but they work. And we have two types here at One Shepherd. First type of this is this. It's called the TA1. The glorious thing about the TA1 is this is sound power. There's no batteries. You have a generator on the side, which is this big key. Hit it a few times when you're ready to talk. That will send a signal down the line. And the other phone, depending on the volume setting, will chirp. And then it'll also give a visual signal that tells you somebody's calling. And you use the smaller button to answer up. And unlike a radio where you gotta go, Mike 14, Mike 14, this is Delta 65, go ahead, send traffic. You're just like, yeah, what is it? <laughs> and you're like, hey, post two, this is post one, I got noise to my and it's just that simple. It's a secure network because you're completely enclosed. You know where the wire is. And before anybody asks, could somebody tap it? Yes. And you will absolutely know if they have. <laughs> you have to find the wire. Yeah, you have to find the wire first. It's an incredibly simple system. Uh, this literally dates back to the Spanish American War type stuff. These units here are probably 70s, 80s production. But they, they work, and they're completely valid. And one of the things they work good at is what we're about to do at the end of this semester, which is area defense and deliberate attack. Because you can string wire between all your fighting positions and have a constant comm system that you're not worried about the batteries dying. That's covert. The enemy can't jam it. You know, Like I said, if the enemy monitors it, that means they're somehow inside your lines and tapping your wire. And you've got a whole lot bigger problems than listening into your really bad jokes. Questions about the TA1 real quick. Alright, completely sound powered phone. Part of the system though is the case. Not only does this case keep the nasty, the gunk, the mud off, the strap is designed for you to wrap this around the tree. That's how you hang up the phone. You know, so it's in your fighting position, wrapped around it. You hear it, rah, 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 and you go, post two, what's up? And then you'll hear them talk. Now, part of a field telephone system is this. And this is called a DR8. It's a spool of wire is about 400 meters on here. Okay? This is what you string position to position to position. Now, you'll see tape on here. There's splices and cuts in here. That's because we've used this stuff a lot. It still works. Um, we ask that if you splice anything, you know, don't cut wire and then throw it away and leave it there. For two reasons. One, we'd be marrying a bad host and littering and making hippies be upset about us. And two, this is money, guys. We reuse things so we keep the mission down. Okay. You can link spools and spools and spools of wire together to cover an amazing distance. This TA-1 right here, it's all you're using. You can talk to another TA-1 about a mile away. Pretty significant distance. Further than your average bow is going to go. Okay. And then we have another type of phone. <coughs> These phones are battery powered. They're designed to run a network or a switchboard. Wow. This one also looks all like it was in the Spanish American War. Believe it or not, it's only 1960 German. But this has battery power. It works off a pair of D-cell batteries. That powers the line. And all the wire communication guys, my MOS no longer exists in the US military, will tell you, it doesn't power the line. It doesn't do such things. Anybody will tell you if you have a phone like this attached to your loop, all the other phones work better. So it doesn't power the line, okay, but it really powers the line. This is your most reliable communication in the field amongst your teams. Usually this phone here, since it's powered, the most powerful one, is put in the command post. And 
and then you loop out to having all these phones in your fighting positions or on your LPO piece. It has a nice covert means, means of communication. You can connect them multiple ways with the wire. One way is you just run from this phone to the post you want to go to. Simple one-way connection, two phones connected together. The other thing is called a hot loop. A hot loop is you run a wire from the main one to all the positions, and in each position, you take a little bit of wire, shave a little bit off, connect the phone into there, and then go. Now, the hot loop works like the old time that they called party line, which your grandparents, your great grandparents, would know about. It was like when every phone on the street was connected to one line, there was a call that came in, the phone rang in every house. So if the CP wants to talk to Outpost 3 and he powers the line, every phone's going to go off. So when you pick up, you got to listen to find out who they want to talk to. Also a very good way to spread information, you know, to like, everybody stand to, stand to. You get the call out to everybody, you know. Also tells you that if you're on post one, then, hey, post three, here's something to their front. Okay, put two and two together, guys. You can get your stuff, stuff together. Now, we're going to go ahead and connect the phones to the wire. Everybody gather in so you can see all this stuff. Okay, on your DR8 spool, you have a little bit of wire that sticks out, just this little tail of wire. That is the end of the wire after you have spooled everything out. And it's set up like this for uh, a very important reason. And so, this 400 meter spool of wire, the place you want to talk to is 500 meters away. When you connect the next spool, it's right there, and you just connect it to the next spool, and you leave the spool there. So when you pick up your wire, you already have the next spool ready with you. I only recommend doing that behind the lines. Because if you do that to a uh, listening post way out front, the enemy comes along and finds it. Huh! <laughs> Wonder what's going on here. <laughs> and they're much more likely to find this than wire on the ground. And uh, real quick, how does everybody think your wire on the ground gets found? Right. So, but that's a good and a bad thing. The bad thing is your enemy tripped on the wire he knows there's a wire and he sees the direction it's running. He's got a clue what's going on. The other thing is, at night, when it falls ass dark, where your night vision is barely functioning, you pick up the wire and you follow it to your outpost, or the outpost follows it back with the fighting position. Man rail. It works both ways. Another thing wire on the ground will tell you. If the enemy finds your wire, what can he do to it? Right. If he's cut the wire, what has he done? Right, because with the phones you probably got a regular contact schedule. You know, because nobody wants Outpost One out there to get their throat slit in the middle of the night and not know about it. So every so often you're like, okay, it's 2100. Oh yeah, Outpost One, everything cool. Oh, it's 2130. Outpost One. Outpost One. Oh fuck. <laughs> Stand two. So it works both ways. So cutting the enemy's wire, if you find it, might not be your best thing to do. Just bear that in mind. It works both ways. You guys, one thing to do is, is radio checks in a real world, especially if you got some radio nerds on the opposition side, there's always a risk associated with broadcasting, right? Radio checks with field phones are free. It doesn't cost you anything. So if you radio check every so often, make sure everybody's awake, if they have any problems, etc., you can do them all the time. It costs you nothing. And then if suddenly you only get comm checks with, with post 1, 2, and 4... Right, so it's almost like a free lunch. That's why we really like field phones here. Oh yeah. And what better place to do that than where you're setting up an area of defense? Exactly. So this is really a really good spot. And just to go off on a slight tangent to tell you a war story and stuff, because you all love war stories, don't you? All right, <laughs> this is one Shepherd war story. My first time as PL. We're on a thing where we've strung these lines. The enemy got the big idea. We keep cutting the line. Well, our schedule's going. We keep knowing we're getting cut tells us two things. One, they're in the area. I know where they are. Because on that particular op, I ran separate lines to the outpost. I can't talk to outpost one, but I can talk to two. I know which line's cut. If 
because I know where it's cut, I know where it's cut. They are supposed to be ambushing me, and we successfully ambushed them every single time. See, works against you, but it also tells you a lot. No answer is the same as an answer. It's information. So how do you use this wonderful thing? On your TA-1, you have this connector right here, and it's got a big sticker. It says, Caution, 100 volts. They are not lying. They are not lying. Okay? You're touching the wires and somebody zaps that thing, you're getting zapped and it's going to hurt a lot. Stuff. And when you're finally not seeing stars and everything, and you have a pacemaker, you're not dead, you're going to want to go kick the shit out of the guy to the other end of the line. Be nice to each other. Don't do this. And the cool thing is for the wires there, they connect super easy. All you do is press down on the button, slide the wire in, slide the wire in, and we're done. That one's connected. Now, say I've been super motivated here, I've walked out 400 meters, I've been careful tying my line off every so often. You want to do that because it trips. Pulls away. The other thing I've seen is people have a phone, somebody pulls on the wire and they go, boom, there goes your phone. <laughs> so tie it off near you, but every so often tie it off in the field. Tie it off means it can just be circle once around the tree. You know, it's not going to get past that. Near you, say like, if this is my fighting position, or Mr. Riddle standing, tie off the rope right there, or the line right there. You know, and leave yourself a little uh, slack in it, so when you stand up and you're like, oh, I gotta take a piss before I and you trip on it, you don't send your phone flying. Ask me how I know. Okay, so now I've, I've walked my 400 meters, like that, my phone's in place, I've connected. Wow, it wasn't that quick. Test it, see if it's working. This one's in the turn volume off, so. Troubleshoot. So I went out there, it didn't work. Recheck your connections. You tape up the connections you No, I taped them up, and we'll get into that because there's one here I can show you. That's a luminescent thing. So that's absorbing light, and at night, if you turn the sound all the way down and you're monitoring your phone, that will come up. And you know somebody's calling you, so you don't have to have that big sound if you're out in the LPO pool. But let me know where you're at. Now the cool thing is, as soon as I talk, notice it went away. Alright? It resets itself automatically. So if we pop, and then all of a sudden, some time's gone by, so I'm tired, I'm not sure. All of a sudden you see that little dot. You know this is something new. All right? The phone works both ways. I can signal him. He can signal me. That's also a way you can communicate too. You know, if you're out there on LPOP, you see something, you want to know, you want the enemy to know you saw it. Not making any noise on your end. That's telling them back there stuff that you saw something. You know, and you can have a code like. Oh, I do it three times, three times, three times. That tells you something. You come up with different codes. And that's all you hear. You know, right. Do you hear me go? Enemy to my front. Got it. Just that sequence and stuff. So that, but you can come up with any number of things. So this is the heart of the system right here. Two phones. I had a T1. 
Race cars in the background, there's a few people always going on. It sounds low. And trust me, 0430 in the morning, when you can hear freaking cockroaches crawl, it's gonna sound like it's talking to you like this! Can you hear me? <laughs> trust me, it will sound like that. Alright. So those are the T1s, that's how it works. Okay? Now I'm gonna unspool a little bit of this. So we can talk. Any electricians in our group? I am. You are? Okay, you're going to have a heart attack when you see this. <laughs> Who's CPR qualified? <laughs> okay. Not even fun, so I'm going to dig it out here. There is a field splice. Do you need to sit down or take a breath or anything? Trust me, I've seen uh, a lot. Okay. There is a, a reason you do it this way, okay? And stuff. First thing, if you splice it end to end like this, somebody trips on it, boing. You can't wrap those two wires. They're, they're small multi-strand wires. You cannot wrap them to heat enough to prevent that from happening. Okay? One, you leave the wires exposed. When it gets wet outside at night, you're shorting out the electrical connection. Okay? So, what do you do? Wrap them together nice. Not one. To level not the whole mess, bend it back on itself, and wrap tape around it. You've just made it pull proof, you've just made it waterproof. It's ugly as hell. It works. It's a field expedient uh, pigtail. Right. Yep. Now here's the thing. I don't like unspooling all this wire, I'd spoil it to this and I'd have a tug of war and I guarantee you this one will pull. Now where field phones absolutely excel is what you guys are going to be doing in the defense. You know, you're not expending battery power. You're not uh, having to have extra supplies. This works. The batteries, as long as you remember to bring them, that's key. Remember to bring them. You can stuff work. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and trivia quiz right here. What great sci-fi show was this in? Battlestar Galactica. Bingo! Nice. Going up. The cool thing is, these are out there. They're available more commonly that the U.S. is surplusing a lot of them. But if you don't have this, regular speaker wire will work. The wire is dual strand, if you notice. And that's obviously what we're just saying. One, you know, you don't want the wires from. If you want to splice a line, like you're running a hot loop from all your defensive position, you get there, take your knife, between the two, create a gap. I'm not going to do this here because this might mess you guys up in the field, okay? Create a gap, you just pull it apart. Once you get the cut going, it pulls very easily. Take your knife, shave off, gently, shave off the uh, um, plastic coating, and then with the side clips, you just clip in. The design of the TA1, because they're facing outboard, will naturally keep the wire split. Create just enough that you can get it in there. You don't need to make it that long, because mm -hmm. that'll defeat the purpose. Right. Another super field expedient trick that works sometimes is you're going along with one spool of wire and for whatever reason it runs out, that's where you want it to run out. You start the new one with the phones put together. It'll, it'll yeah. naturally build the connection. I would say tie the two lines, 